Right. Hi, everybody. I actually started this lecture with a great joke. Um, my son is here and he's incredibly bored, so he's helping me make videos. And he actually read off something I had written for him and introduced it. But my program's crashed three times, so this is now the third time I'm trying to record it. Hopefully, it goes better this time. Anyways, we're talking about the last topic um, in chapter two, the first law. In the previous video, we answered question one, which was if I had some specified set of conditions, the standard state, how do you get delta H for some reaction? And the answer is you look it up or you use Hess's law, right? That's how you do it. Today we'll talk about um, the complementary question, which is if I have a specific reaction, how do I get delta H under a different set of conditions, specifically temperature? And uh, I think it's, it's pretty reasonable to think about, actually. Um, here's how you might think about this problem. So, uh, my pen is not trying, why isn't it trying? I'm gonna put enthalpy H on the Y axis and temperature T on the X axis. I have some T1, I have some T2, and the question is what connects these two? And the answer is that the slope of that plot is CP. Uh, remember that CP equals the partial of H with respect to temperature at constant pressure. Um, and so if I wanted to calculate the enthalpy at T2, you could just do some simple calculus and you'd end up with an expression like this. Um, actually, I, I have my server. H at T2 is equal to H at T1 plus Cp delta T. Um, right? That would give me the enthalpy at the second temperature. Now I could imagine this happening for the products Right, so this could be for the products. And you would get a similar expression for the reactants. So again, here's T1, here's T2. You get something which looks like this. H at T2 equals H at T1 plus Cp delta T. And this is all referring to the reactants. What I need to recognize is that this quantity here is delta H of the reaction at T1, and this one here is delta H of the reaction at T2. Okay. Products minus reactants. And so in order to get delta H of the reaction, all you have to do is subtract these two. Delta H of the reaction at T2 equals delta H of the reaction at T1 plus Cp of the products minus Cp of the reactants times delta T. That's it. Okay. Um, so this has a specific name. Uh, it's called Kirchhoff's law. This is the same Kirchhoff who did the circuit stuff in physics. Um, this is Atkins picture of it. It's the same sort of thing, products and reactants at two different temperatures. This is the expression for um, the enthalpy at different temperatures. In my derivation, I assume that this was constant. That may not necessarily be the case. Um, this is then delta H at delta H of reaction at T2. Right? This is equivalent to what I just wrote. What's different is this expression here, right? This is delta R Cp dt. And again, delta R is products minus reactants, where these are multiplied by the stoichiometry number. I'll put a couple example problems up, um, which will hopefully help you understand this a little bit better. And uh, I will see you here. This is our last topic in the first unit. So hopefully this went okay. And uh, we'll see you again soon.